back to the overtime. I am your host Lindsay Ridgeway and I am here at the NFL Experience in the Phoenix Convention Center ahead of Super Bowl 57 between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs head coach Andy Reid is also a former NAU assistant coach. Earlier this week I caught up with him about some of his favorite memories of his time in Flagstaff. Coach Andy Reid first came to Flagstaff along with his brother who was a graduate student and said how nice it was to be able to come back years later. I need to go back and as a coach. I worked for Larry, the great Larry Cantera and uh, we, had a, we had an awesome staff up there and we actually, uh, it kind of came down to us in Reno for the championship that year and it was uh, really a neat experience. Talking about former head coach Larry Cantera, he describes his and former assistant coach Rick Smith's unique way about them. You tell him, hey, you know, go get some sodas and we're going to go camping and, play, and we're going to go out in the woods there and build a fire, roast marshmallows, drink sodas. He is one of five NAU coaches to become an NFL head coach. Kansas City Chiefs CEO and part owner says Reed's key to success is how he treats his players. He the players with tremendous respect, yet he's also demanding. And uh, the players really appreciate that. They appreciate the honesty. They appreciate the integrity. And I really think that's part of the key to having long-term success. Though his time in Flagstaff was almost 40 years ago, Reed says his favorite restaurant still holds a place in his heart. Uh, going out to Mormon Lake Steakhouse for a big steak. Love that place. Two Porto Ava Nichols also caught up with the former Lumberjack, who is in town for the Super Bowl this week, with his work with the NFL Players Association. NAU alumni and former quarterback Kerry Grosser knew he wanted to take football beyond the field and into his career. I'm with NFL Players Inc., which is the uh, for-profit subsidiary commercial arm of the union. And so we commercialize the players' rights, um, so name, image, likeness. Um, we do that for NFL players. So you think about trading cards and video games and jerseys. Um, and my role is really to continue driving that revenue on behalf of the players, and that helps fund our union and then um, it actually gets shared out to the players equally from the revenue we create from those sales of products. So that's what we're focused on. This week, he coordinated the seventh annual NFL Players Association Pitch Day. Grossert said NAU played a valuable role in broadening his perspective past football. You know, but my experience there was, was student athlete for sure, and I got a great educational experience, and it gave me the tools to say, hey, I'm, I'm not just a you know, quarterback or a, 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 a football player. There's other opportunities out there for me to, to um, you know, go beyond uh, the field. And so, you know, uh, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I use a big reason uh, because of that, yeah. Ava Nichols, NAZ Today. Let's head on outside the convention center where sports reporter Casey Everett is getting some interactions in with the fans. Casey? Thanks, Lindsay. I'm out here taking in all the football festivities. Let's go talk to some fans. I'm here with? Ryan. Ryan. And do you have any game day superstitions that you kind of have? Hey, look, we're going back to the Super Bowl. I think I think Patty's going to bring it home. Everyone's talking about his ankle. I think it's no big deal. I think we're going to we're going to bring it all the way this year. All the way, all the way. And do you have any like go to snacks for Super Bowl? Like when you're back home? Oh, we do a whole big snack stadium. We do like it's like multi layers. We got LED lights in it. We have everyone over. We put on a big screen. It's going to be a big deal. My name is Sharad Kabrawal. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Huge Eagles fan. I have not washed my underwear in nine days. That's my superstition. So I'm here with Allie, and these are my parents. Ron. Stacy. And do you guys have it? And you, where are you guys from, first and foremost? Maryland. 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 <laughs> and do you guys have any superstitions when it comes to game day? You answered that. You got a good answer. <laughs> I always wear my Reggie White jersey. As a matter of fact, I told my wife uh, before they won the last Super Bowl that if they never win a Super Bowl, I have to be buried in it. So. <laughs> well, there you go. And then do you have any favorite snack that you have every Super Bowl or game day? Cheese steaks. Cheese steaks? Beer. Beer. <laughs> Whatever he smokes on the grill, oh. I'm eating. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So I'm here with? Carlos. Fred. Fred. And where are you guys from? Uh, I live here in Surprise, Arizona. Hermiston, Oregon. Oregon, cool, cool. And do you have any game day superstitions that you always go by? Um, never put your hat on the bed. Says bad luck. Yeah. So. Don't eat bananas. Don't eat bananas. <laughs> That's a new one. And then, um, what's your go-to snack on game day? 
Uh, just something easy, probably buffalo wings. Buffalo wings. Nachos. Well, as you can see, there's some crazy superstitions and some really good meals. Back to you, Lindsay. Thanks so much, Casey. It's always so cool to see how seriously fans take their game day superstitions. Now, let's head on down to sports reporters Michael Manny and Brendan Martin on their thoughts ahead of the big game. Thanks, Lindsay. We're outside a Super Bowl experience in downtown Phoenix just a few days before Super Bowl 57 at State Farm Stadium. Michael Manny and I here have, have a bit of a dis disagreement on not exactly how this game is going to be won, but something that we definitely need to know is that both teams are going to have to go battle in the trenches. That's exactly it, Brendan. This Eagles de uh, defense, 70 sacks on the year. That's tied for the third most in a season in NFL history. The usual suspects are there. Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, uh, Hassan Reddick, a breakout year, but also Nindamakin Sue and Robert Quinn, two generational pass rushers coming off the bench. Absolutely. we got to look at this, this Chiefs offensive line as well, revamped, retooled, and ready to go after losing the Super Bowl a few years ago against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, a, and it was really a tough game to watch, uh, especially a tough game to play if you're Patrick Mahomes. But now that he got, he's got new players on that offensive line. Orlando Brown is just one of them to name a few. Uh, certainly uh, going to be interesting to see. That offensive line only allowed 26 sacks uh, this year, tied for the third least uh, in the league. And certainly quite a shock when you just saw you know, what kind of performance they put up in that Super Bowl in Tampa Bay a few years ago. That's exactly it. Patrick Mahomes in that game was running for his life. And if the Chiefs are not careful, yes, they retooled that line. Creed Humphrey, uh, the center, another guy to spotlight there. If they're not careful, he could be doing that again, except this time he doesn't have the mobility. His ankle's still likely not 100%, and the Eagles can get pressure from all sides. Mahomes is certainly known for his mobility, and it's something that's going to, you know, we'll see exactly how hampered he is. We do know he's still dealing with it, still getting treatment for it. But I think a big reason why that offensive line has been so successful is because of his mobility. But I think that could be added with the re-addition of Clyde Edwards-Lair, the running back who's been out since week 11 with a high ankle sprain. Uh, one of the best pass-catching running backs in the league. He's been doing that ever since his days at LSU in that big uh, national championship winning team a few years back. Uh, I think the re-addition of him is going to really, you know, open up a new dimension. Uh, but at the same time, it does come to the expense of uh, McCole Hardman being placed on uh, injured reserve as well. We really need to see what that, uh, that wide receiver core is going to really look like for the Chiefs. And on the side of the Eagles offense, if they're able to run the ball at will like they've been able to do all year, I have a hard time seeing how the Chiefs defense can keep up. You have Kenneth Gainwell coming out of the backfield. You have Miles Sanders, Boston Scott is shifty. Oh, and a guy named Jalen Hurts, who the defense is likely going to need to keep a spy on at all times. How is the Kansas City Chiefs defense, which does a lot of things well but not great, how will they be able to slow that down? I mean, I think a big thing you got to have to look at is Chris Jones, a guy who's been one of the most decorated players uh, at his position in the NFL uh, pretty much almost all time. But you look at his playoff stats, he only just got his first few uh, playoff sacks in their last game in the AFC Championship game. So it's been a really, uh, really uh, interesting to see sort of how he's been able to elevate his game uh, in the postseason as well. I think certainly he's going to be a guy to kind of uh, keep an eye on that. You mentioned all those, all the, their rushing attacks, uh, pretty much led by Jalen Hurts. He's one of those guys who can, who's been able to run the ball. He's been able to do it with his legs, and he's shown he can do it with his arm as well. And that Chief secondary is going to be in for a battle. But it's going to take a few of those uh, the passes from Hurts that really open up the offense for Philadelphia. Well, the Chiefs' defense, you know, in that secondary, they are starting multiple rookies in the secondary, so that's going to be something to look for. And it's not just the running game that gets it done for Philadelphia. They, I, they call that duo uh, Batman and Robin, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. That's two very big targets that the Kansas City secondary is going to have to slow down. You had to look at other guys too, like Marquez Valdez Scantling, uh, another addition uh, to this, this Chiefs wide receiver core, especially with the loss. Uh, of Tyreek Hill going to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, we were wondering if, you know, would Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team be the same? Well, they've been pretty much exactly that. A team that was the top of the, of, the, of the AFC, got the number one overall seed, got the bye week, and, it was, and just like the Eagles, they've got that extra rest, which has been so key and so important in an injury-filled season. That's exactly it. They almost haven't missed a beat, uh, even without Tyreek Hill, and I'm, and I'm sure uh, we'll uh, bring the rest of those guys up. We don't know the status of some more of their wide receivers like Juju Smith-Schuster hurt, uh, hurt in the AFC Championship game. Katerius Tony too. So the Eagles defense, they have an outstanding secondary too, led you know by cornerback Darius Slay. That's, that is a lot for Kansas City to contend with. Nothing they haven't faced before, but a lot to contend with. 
So really quickly now, final scores for this game, final predictions. I think, you know, Kansas City, they've been here. They've done it before. They've won Super Bowls. They've lost Super Bowls recently. Patrick Mahomes, you know, for a guy who's only, you know, 27 years old, he's about as experienced as you can get. I think the Chiefs pull it out. They have the experience, and they're ready to go. And if the Eagles can run the ball at will, I think they'll be able to have this at hand. The lights will not be too bright for Jalen Hurts. Well, we're only a few days away from finding out Super Bowls on Sunday. We'll send it right back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thanks, Brendan and Michael. I'm interested to see if those predictions come true. Brendan also had a chance this week to catch up with two Fiesta Bowl alums ahead of their return to State Farm Stadium on Sunday. When Kevon Wallace steps onto the Super Bowl 57 field this Sunday, it won't be the first big game he's played in Arizona. He also played in the Fiesta Bowl, one of college football's premier bowl games. I feel like I'm made for the big game. I feel like I'm made for the big moment. Eagles teammate Miles Sanders also played in the Fiesta Bowl with Penn State in 2017. While it was a large stage, Sanders says no other game can prepare you for a Super Bowl. I'll be honest, I said this a little earlier, but I don't think it gets no bigger than this. Um, I don't think any game can be equivalent to how this game feels and the anticipation and stuff like that. While Wallace won two Fiesta Bowls at Clemson, there's one memory that sticks out. The last Super Bowl moment I can remember, I mean, I said Super Bowl, the last Fiesta Bowl moment I can remember was my sack versus Justin Fields. Outside of the game, Wallace says he's just happy to be back in a state that he loves. I don't know. It's just it's something about AZ. I love AZ. I love, I love training out. I train out here every all season. I love training out here. I love just being out here. I don't know. It's just spiritually, I just feel like I can just win here. Brendan Martin and AZ today. Now, a Super Bowl week for the fans is just getting started. Sports reporter Ava Nichols is walking around and checking out some of the crazy prices with getting the full Super Bowl experience. I am here just outside the Super Bowl experience with Hector Garcia. And how far did you travel for this week of events? Uh, a lot travel because I live a lot. Uh, a lot here. A lot here. Yeah, you're from. You said you're from Mexico. Yeah, I am from Mazatlán, Sinaloa, Mexico. And you are also told me you're going to the game. So, how much was that ticket price? Uh, Forty dollars and the my jersey, one hundred fifty. So your jersey was more than the the game itself. Yeah, today bye. And um, kind of, what have you noticed about the prices around town? It's, it's very very nice. It's better for you. Yeah. In Mexico. Yeah. So a lot more expensive here, huh? <laughs> what about like parking prices? Uh, it's, it's the problem. This the parking is very. Expensive. Yeah, it can add up for sure. Well, thank you well, thank and you. have so much fun at the game. Thank you. Thank back you. to you. Thanks, Ava, and thank you, Casey, Michael, and Brendan. We will be back in the studio next week for the latest edition of The Overtime. But in the meantime, follow along with all of our content leading up to the game on our Instagram at NAUMIC Sports and on YouTube at NAZ Today. Now, from all of us down here in Phoenix, I'm Lindsay Ridgeway. Have a good night.